Welcome to the OLV Daily Reflection for Tuesday, April 20th. Today's first reading for Mass comes to us from the seventh chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. It reads, Stephen said to the people, the elders, and the scribes, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You receive the law as transmitted by angels, but you do not observe it. When they heard this, they became infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees, cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. Now Saul was consenting to his execution. Today's passage is truly tragic in its outcome. St. Stephen is killed because of how he was boldly proclaiming the truth of Jesus Christ. But before I talk about this tragic event, I want to provide some more context to this situation. The words of St. Stephen would have been difficult to hear. The observant Jews who were there would not have liked the comparison that was being made by St. Stephen. Because he was comparing those present to those who persecuted the prophets. And since the observant Jews followed the teachings of the prophets in their minds to the letter, this would have been considered a slanderous accusation to them. They, in fact, would probably have cast the same accusation back at St. Stephen. You are the one who's forsaken the prophets and the law, and you are working to undermine their teachings and the law, not us. And I point out this context because St. Stephen did not have to be killed. If those present would have strived to listen more carefully, I believe there could have been a different outcome. And we know there was different outcomes. The early Jewish converts to Christianity were ones who had hearts and minds opening to listening to what had been said about Jesus Christ. And as a result, they were baptized. They came to belief. However, with St. Stephen's situation, sinfulness won the day. And it does seem as if sinfulness wins the day quite often when people do not commit to listen to each other and seek to find the truth in all situations. But we need to remember that sinfulness never wins in the end because of Christ's glorious victory. This encounter between St. Stephen and the crowd leads to his death, but St. Paul who is referred to as Saul in this passage, would be transformed by this tragic event through Christ's grace. His participation in this event would cause him to commit more ardently to spreading the gospel, as we'll hear in the days to come. So in our own lives, brothers and sisters, we need to strive always to listen and to make sure we're committed to finding the truth. If we do this, Sinfulness will have a tougher time of taking hold in our lives and in our relationships. But we also need to remember that if sinfulness does win the day, we know that Christ has won the victory. And we know that Christ can heal, transform, and bring forth blessings from any situation. So we seek to avoid sin. But even if sin wins, we know that we have an advocate in Jesus Christ who can help us to move forward. So throughout this Easter season, let us remember these realities and strive more ardently to bring forth peace in this world and at the very least, peace in our own hearts. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us.